It's Thursday, January 21st, 2016, at least for a little while longer, and I thought today we would do another quick episode, quick in quotes there, of me telling you about the news stories that I found interesting this week in another episode of That's What I Like. First up, a couple of gaming stories. I see a very interesting story out here about Minecraft. Anytime I see something Minecraft related, you know I gotta talk about it. But apparently Microsoft and Mojang, Mojang, I don't care, came together and they've announced Minecraft Education Edition. Now this does sort of follow closely on the heels of Raspberry Pi and all the coding stuff they've done related to Minecraft with that. And actually reading the story a little more thoroughly, I see that this is actually based upon something called Minecraft EDU. It's something that's been around for a little while and Microsoft and Mojang are basically stepping in and saying, let's take this and make it something big. So they're gonna make it a free trial and then the people that have been paying for Minecraft EDU are gonna get one year free of Minecraft Education Edition. And that's something that I've been saying for a long time is they can take something like Minecraft and bring it into schools and make it educational. I'm totally for that. Now the old school kid in me absolutely loves this next story. I saw over on Engadget that John Romero, the guy behind Doom, has released a new map for Doom. The add-on map is called Tech Gone Bad, and it's a third party map so you're gonna have to go into the command line, you're gonna have to do some tinkering with Doom to actually get it to run. If you've got anything that will actually still run Doom, I would assume you're gonna do this in an emulator. But if you do have a copy of Doom, if you have been running it, you may want to check out this new map. If John Romero is still working on it after all of these years, it's got to be good. Moving on to some film-related things, some movie and cinema type things. The next one, I like the story because I think it's really amusing, but I also think it's kind of silly. There's an article over on Gizmodo talking about people that are shooting an entire movie using the backup camera on a Toyota Prius. It says LA sketch comedy group Mommy Comedy decided to see where they could go artistically using the backup camera. So I'm actually, I, I will admit, I have not watched the video, but apparently it is up on YouTube. So if you'd like to check it out, I'm gonna check it out here in a minute, but not at the moment. I got other things to do because on March 18th Netflix is bringing to the screen to Netflix's online screen as it were Pee-wee's big holiday as a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s Pee-wee was a big part of my childhood And I had no idea Paul Rubin was even still doing the Pee-wee character last I'd heard he was doing some terrible things in a movie theater So clear out a little bit of time on March 18th I'm definitely gonna be putting it on my calendar because because Pee-wee. Moving on to some science news, because you know I love me some science, and I left a lot of it out of last week's video. It says astronomers may have found the ninth planet in our solar system. For a long time we thought Pluto was the planet. It is not a planet by the technical standards and definitions. And it says here that this planet is supposedly five to ten times the size of Earth, which realistically is not all that big when you compare it to some of the other planets in our solar system. And it circles the sun. One solar cycle is between 10,000 and 20,000 years. Will this have any major impact on anything other than just science books? I don't think it will. It's not gonna change anything because it was already there, but still, it's nice to have that nice round number of nine as our planets again. We can go back to singing the old songs about the planets, except instead of Pluto, it's now planet number nine, or whatever numeric designation they give it until they come up with a quirky name for it. I saw an article on Techno Buffalo that NASA has put out a photo of the first flower officially grown in space. It's a zinnia and it's absolutely beautiful and it definitely gives hope to a lot of the future when we eventually destroy the entire planet somehow. And makes me wanna go see The Martian because I know there was a lot of horticulture, agriculture type things in The Martian and I have not seen it or read the book yet. Shame on me. And there's a part of me that really wants to plug Audible here because I know The Martian is available on Audible. I just haven't gotten it there yet. Maybe I'll put a link down in the description if you wanted to sign up for Audible, you always can. I will have that down there. There's a trial and everything. In other space related news, China is going to attempt to land on the far side of the moon. Apparently up to this point, every single time we have made a moon landing or anybody has made a moon landing, it has been on the side facing the Earth, which is always the same side, if you didn't know that. Oh, hold on, let me put my little hat on there. Perhaps it'll be like all of those sci-fi movies talking about what's on the other side of the moon. I seem to remember one, I cannot remember the name of it. Feel free to tell me in the comments below, but something about Hitler sending the Third Reich to the moon. So maybe when they get to the other side of the moon, they'll find Hitler's lost, forgotten army. And the last space-related news, a frozen tardigrade, I think they're also called water bears, had been frozen for more than 30 years years and has been brought back to life thanks to scientists in Japan. I know Hank Green has talked a lot about tardigrades in his videos and there's some absolutely astounding creatures that can live through practically anything. They're better than cockroaches, but 30 years, that's that's a really impressive feat there. I think there's something that humans could learn from these things. Moving on to some sort of general tech news. I think it was April 1st, April Fool's Day of 2015, Amazon announced the Dash. There had been some other Dash related things before, but they announced the Dash button. And basically these are little buttons you can put around your house. You tap the button, it makes an Amazon order for whatever that button is 
designated for. Well, according to an article on Techno Buffalo, the first Amazon Dash replenishment devices have shown up. The first of these sort of devices is a GE washer. There's several brother printers and a G-Mate smart blood glucose monitor. Say that five times fast. And essentially what these things are going to do, they're not going to have a big button on them or anything. They'll monitor themselves for, for the washer, for example, for when it gets low on detergent. The printers will monitor when they get low on ink. And when they get too low, they'll just go ahead and automatically reorder. I would assume that's something that's configurable and hopefully something doesn't go wrong with it. But if it's anything like the dash buttons, anytime you press that button, you have to actually go confirm it before it places that order for you. But it does supposedly make things simpler. I have not actually ordered my dash button yet to try it out because we don't have anything that we order from Amazon that frequently that we would need that. Amazon also was back in the news for talking about Prime Air, the service using drones to deliver packages that they've been touting for a while now. According to Amazon, just looking at the quote from the guy here, they're planning to do deliveries within 30 minutes. It says the goals for themselves are for the range to be over 10 miles. That's going to be kind of up in the air as to, heh, up in the air, as to the battery life and everything. Because the drones themselves are going to weigh 55 pounds. As a person who owns a stack of drones, 55 pounds is pretty significant. And they say they can deliver packages that weigh up to five pounds and that most of the packages that Amazon ships are under that five pound limit, surprisingly enough. The other percentage apparently comes to my house. There were a couple of stories out of Microsoft. They gave some more information about the HoloLens. If you have not heard about the HoloLens, absolutely awesome little device, at least from what I've heard, haven't tried it myself. But they say that the field of view on it is like standing two feet away from a 15 inch monitor, which is not good. It's not anywhere near what they're showing in all the commercials about HoloLens. It looks uber immersive and everything, and this does not sound like it. And it says that it can get up to five and a half hours of battery life or two and a half hours if you're heavily using it, which for something that is completely wireless, that that's not terrible. I don't actually anticipate having something like that and using it for more than a couple of hours at a time possibly not for any longer than about an hour to an hour and a half at a time. It's the 15 inch display field of view thing that is confusing to me. I'll, I guess I'll just have to wait and try to get my hands on one at some point. Microsoft, if you're, yes, gimme. They also want to be able to project a life-size person into your home to do video chat. That's an interesting one. They're using the Kinect and a digital projector with some depth sensing technology to project the image of a person onto a couch across the room from you. So they can be sitting in their room thousands of miles away with a Kinect looking at them and gauging sort of distances and everything and to project it to sort of make it look like you're in the room with them even though It'll just be a flat image on the wall looking kind of like this. If you could do something like that, where maybe you build a dummy and then project the image of the person onto the dummy, that would be amazing. In other tech news, BQ has made the announcement that the Ubuntu tablet is coming with full convergence. That's one of the things that Ubuntu has been promising for years but has not quite delivered on. We should be hearing more about it at Mobile World Congress. I actually got an email from the Ubuntu people just a couple of days ago. There's a conference call coming up that I'm going to be involved in where I'll learn a little bit more about it. Maybe I'll make a video talking about it, recapping it. And a couple more stories. If you use Android Pay, make sure to listen up. There's apparently an Android Pay rewards program going on, and if you use Android Pay 10 times, you can get a free Chromecast out of it. For the first nine times, I guess you get a free song or free download of some sort, but the 10th time, you could get a free Chromecast out of it. Now, the Chromecast is not a hugely expensive device, but if you don't want to pay 30 or 35 bucks for one, that'd be interesting. Go to McDonald's and pay for you and all of your friends to have an order of fries or some of their new cheese sticks that I haven't tried yet. Do that 10 times and you might get a free Chromecast. And the last one I thought was kind of interesting. As you may be able to see way back there in the background, I use a standing desk, a treadmill desk, for the grand majority of my day job type things, and a lot of times in the evenings. But if you cannot afford a treadmill desk because they are ridiculously expensive, and standing desks can even be very expensive, a $25 cardboard desk has been created. And it's essentially industrial quality cardboard that has been bent origami sort of as it were in such a way that you can flatten it out entirely, grab it by a couple of handles and lift and you'll have a standing desk on top of your existing desk. It'll hold a laptop and a keyboard and you can use that for working. I actually seriously thought about ordering one myself if for no other reason than to test it out and my wife has been talking about wanting a standing desk at work but not having the place to actually put one. So that would maybe get the job done if it would hold her monitors. But anyway, that is actually the last of all the stories that I have to talk about. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as long as it may have turned out. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a thumbs up below the video though. Let's me know that you like this kind of video and makes me want to keep doing them and subscribe to receive all of my videos when they become available all of the random things that I tend to talk about so thanks so much for watching again though and we will see you next time